Hi friends, GraphRack has addressed two main shortcomings of a rack system. Using a rack system, we cannot retrieve the global context as during the indexing process, we split our knowledge base into very small chunks and during the retrieval, we retrieve only a few of those small chunks. Hence, we miss the global context or the overarching themes. Now, the graph rack has addressed this issue by building the communities and their summaries during the indexing process itself. And the second one is, to have a comprehensive understanding, we need to make connections or relationships between different parts of our knowledge base. The parts being the text chunks. We do not do so in a standard rack system. In a graph rack, since it is a graph architecture, where we have the nodes and edges or relationship, we make connections between different chunks. Those are the two shortcomings addressed by graph rag, but it has a few operational disadvantages. For example, it is very costly. Now to index the Christmas stories, the project Gutenberg book, the GPT-40 model has costed up to $6. And the graph rag is extremely slow. It took more than 20 minutes for indexing. And the third, which is also more important, is we cannot do incremental ingestion in a graph rack. In a real world scenario, as we get new data or new knowledge, we want to add it to our existing graph database. Using graph rag, we cannot do such incremental ingestion. And finally, the graph rag source code is also quite complex, as you can see from the GitHub, uh, uh, the issues raised. Now, just last week, we have a new research proposing an alternative to graph rag, which they call light rag, simple and fast rag. Now let's look at a few key points before we go into the code. All right, so the light rag incorporates graph structure into text indexing and retrieval process. Okay, so we will be making use of this graph structure during the indexing as well as the retrieval process. And it employs a dual level retrieval system that enhances comprehensive information retrieval both for low level as well as high level knowledge discovery just like in a graph rack where we can query at a local level or global level like in a light rack also we can do that and finally the integration of graph structures with vector representations okay we will be creating the vectors or embeddings for all the graph elements the nodes as well as relationships now, this will facilitate efficient retrieval of related entities and their relationships. All right, it works in a three-step process. First, we extract the entities and relationship from our given document, okay? And then we create these key value pairs. So for each entity and relationship, what we do is we create a small text paragraph summarizing the relevant snippet from the external data to aid it during in text generation. Okay, so this is the key part. So for all the nodes and entities extracted in step one, in step two, we are turning that into a key value pairs where the key is either the node or the edge and the value is a text paragraph summarizing, uh, summarizing it. Okay, and in the final step, which is called entity resolution, we deduplicate uh, any entities or the relationships. Okay, here is a schematic representation. So from the given text, first we extract these entities and relationships. For example, beekeeper, observe bees. These two are entities and we have the relationship observe. And in the second step, for each of these three, we create these key value pairs. So here we have created a short summary or paragraph of what it represents okay and in the final step we simply do the uh, entity and relationship deduplication and we build the graph or uh, which is also called indexing now this is how it looks like if it is a node or uh, sorry or an entity we have the entity name the type and the description now in a traditional knowledge graph we would have entities and relationship but we wouldn't have these uh, descriptions okay and similarly for the relationships also we have the source node target node and 
we also create some keywords as well as the, the description okay that's during the indexing process now during the retrieval we can extract both the low level keys as well as the high level keys high level meaning the aggregated or the overarching one uh, to retrieve more of a global context okay so we extract the entities relationships these context as well as those short summaries we have created now in the graph database in addition to all this information we will be storing the vector embeddings of all the key elements also for a better retrieval okay or more relevant retrieval right this we have looked at so this we have already covered a low level retrieval uh, this is when uh, we retrieve specific entities along with their associated relationships okay now we do this when we want to answer more detail oriented uh, and precise information uh, type questions and the second mode is this high level retrieval where we want to extract these broader topics or overarching themes okay uh, here we aggregate information across uh, multiple related entities or relationships all right and i just want to show you uh, this now the light rack is a much lighter version of graph rack it's not exactly the replica but there are a lot of similarities and here the authors have compared uh, the light rack against the naive or standard rack uh, the heidi as well as a graph rack okay now they did benchmarking across different domain data sets agriculture computer science legal mix etc and measured uh, these uh, four metrics uh, surprisingly light rack even though uh, it not doing as much processing as a graph rack during the indexing process uh, the results are uh, a significant the results are either quite comparable or uh, better than a graph rack okay all right uh, as i mentioned graph rack is extremely slow as you can see here graph rack versus light rack uh, the number of tokens generated so in a graph rack the information is extracted at multiple levels during the indexing process these communities uh, sub level communities the summaries uh, so on and so forth right so to the llm we will be making uh, many calls as you can see from here uh, the api calls okay as well as the tokens being used so in the light rack these are 100 times or even 1000 times uh, uh, smaller okay all right let's get to the code it's super simple install light rack and import light rack and query param now during the indexing process we will be storing lot lot of data uh, the entities relationships embedding so on and so forth so just create a directory and then depending on which llms we want to use for example if we want to use open ai models just import gpt4 mini uh, or gpt4 and then instantiate the light rack so we just need to supply a working directory to store the indexed files and then the an llm optionally we can also supply an embedding model okay now it also support olama as well as hugging face uh, it's pretty standard so import olama models for both llm as well as embedding and then instantiate light rack with a working directory uh, the olama llm and uh, the embedding model okay similarly we can use hugging face as well uh, so supply uh, the llm model uh, when we use hugging face we also need to provide uh, the tokenizer uh, and uh, the embedding okay um, all right and then once we instantiate the graph all we need to do is simply supply our knowledge base or the documents so here we have uh, the project uh, gutenberg uh, that christmas stories book and simply do rag insert okay now we can also do batch insertion uh, we, if we have multiple documents now more importantly we can do this incremental ingestion for example let's say we already index our knowledge base and sometime later we got some new documents maybe new product related documents or manuals uh, things like that so to the existing index we can ingest our new data which is what mainly missing in a graph rack now once we created the index it will create a number of files uh, i'll show you a number of files like these uh, for example uh, the vector database here we have the chunks entities uh, relationships and uh, the graph ml file as well uh, this you can visualize using neo4j etc and let's look at a couple of those files so first here we have entities uh, so the embedding model dimension we are using node to vec uh, that's the dimension but uh, here we have all the 
entities or the nodes okay so the project gutenberg uh, then fzir source uh, so and so forth so for each one uh, we would have uh, an id as well okay now here is the author this charles dickens okay and similarly we have the relationships uh, here we have for example the source node the target node and again uh, some relationship uh, uh, id okay and key value store so here we have our original text chunks uh, so the content uh, uh, the tokens uh, token length that's uh, 1200 and some some simple uh, ordering as well as uh, ids okay so during the indexing process uh, we built all these which we will use during the retrieval process okay so once we build the index we can simply query which does both the retrieval as well as the generation now here we have four queries uh, the query is the same in all the cases uh, what are the top themes uh, in this story and the mode the retrieval mode or what information we want to retrieve from the graph is different now naive means it's a traditional or standard rag so what we are going to do is we are going to simply extract some top n chunks we will not be using any graph related uh, information and then we have local for more specific information we have global for overarching themes and then we have hybrid which combine both the local as well as uh, global uh, depending on our requirement okay uh, all right uh, the indexing process it hardly took uh, uh, two minutes uh, compared to 20 minutes of uh, a standard drag okay uh, sorry if you hear my kid uh, crying noise but okay so this is where uh, i start the indexing process now there are a number lot of default values uh, for example uh, we did not supply the uh, chunk size uh, the overlap uh, sorry what happened yeah uh, let me go back yeah uh, the chunk overlap uh, so and so forth here we have uh, the embedding algorithm node to wake the dimension uh, if you want we can explicitly provide uh, all these values all right uh, uh, so we are building the graph um, so first our given knowledge base or document it is broken or split sorry split into 42 uh, chunks and then uh, we will be extracting the entities and relationships so here uh, here we have total 596 uh, entities and 318 uh, relationships that's before the third step which is the entity uh, uh, resolution right so after deduplicating we left with 400 nodes and 245 edges as compared to what we have here okay so we build the index and then first we are performing naive search okay the retrieval is naive meaning it's a standard uh, rack so out of 32 sorry 39 chunks uh, in the standard rack uh, we extracted uh, only three chunks the th top three chunks okay now this book is a very simple book uh, it's a some christmas related uh, stories uh, 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 so here these are the themes right uh, so redemption uh, the importance of compassion and connection uh, the impact of time uh, the critique of materialism okay so even the standard rack uh, because we have only 42 chunks out of which we are extracting three chunks right so even these three chunks cover uh, some important aspects or the themes uh, of this book but imagine we have an enterprise level knowledge base or uh, manuals uh, of uh, thousands of pages so we have tens of thousands of uh, chunks in our vector database and we are extracting only top three or even top 10 chunks they wouldn't be sufficient uh, to cover the overarching themes or global level right uh, which is the main shortcoming of the standard rack and then here we are doing a local search so here you will see uh, we have extracted 60 entities one zero zip relationship and uh, three text uh, uh, units or these are the chunks okay now when we extract these entities and relationship that also include the summaries or the summary paragraphs we have created okay again we can look at the themes uh, the transformation redemption the importance of time christmas spirit uh, generosity and human connection and compassion and we have an additional one morality and legality okay now if we do the global search because this is supposed to be at an aggregated level uh, we will see fewer uh, entities and relationships so here we have 57 entities and 60 relationships as compared to a local search which has 106 relationship because these are supposed to be the global ones uh, i have already looked at the themes which are similar as i mentioned uh, this is a relatively simple book a short book uh, with uh, 
uh, Christmas stories. So even using local search, uh, we can extract uh, the overarching themes. And then finally, we have a hybrid search and we have the themes here. Okay. All right. Um, that, that's all I want to cover. So the takeaway message is, one, it is much faster, at least 10 to 20 times faster um, on this limited experiment. And also, as compared to close to $60 using GPT-40 model, uh, for this experiment, I used GPT-40 mini. It has costed me just 60 cents. So that's 100 times less, but uh, the GPT-40 mini is 10 times uh, uh, less costlier than GPT-40. So that still means light rack is 10 times cheaper than graph rack as well as at least 20, 10 to 20 times faster than graph rack okay and more importantly it also supports uh, incremental ingestion all right uh, if you find this content useful please consider liking uh, subscribing and sharing with others who might uh, also benefit uh, thank you very much